Liberty Vittert. I am a statistician here in the UK and I began as a pure mathematician in the US uh, at MIT. But my research has sort of really moved into how we help people understand numbers, where these crazy numbers come from, and really, frankly, the misuse of statistics for good and for bad. If you're an expert in something, you know, it's, your real, it's your field, and someone comes in and tells you something about your expertise, they give you a new way to do it or a new method or this crazy new thing, the first thing you do is you ask them questions. You ask them questions about their new idea because you know it. And the answers to those questions, what the person says, really gives you a feel for what they're telling you is a good idea or not. You know, if, their, if their new idea is a good idea, you'll know pretty quickly with a couple questions or get a feel for whether it's a good idea. I can't teach people to be a statistician in 20 minutes, nor do they necessarily want to learn. But what I can do is give you the questions that I ask when I'm presented with a number or a report. You know, what I say and what gives me a good feel for whether these numbers or this statistic or report or whatever is a good idea or not, or makes sense. And there's three questions you ask. Who did they ask? What did they ask? And how was it interpreted? And if there isn't clarity in those questions, then the credence of the numbers, of the report or whatever, should really raise a question in your mind. And it's at that point that you can then go, I don't know, hire a statistician or hire a data science person or a data analytics person. But you can get a feel, whether you're an expert in it or not, about whether this really makes sense. Let's take a very simple example. President Trump in July over the summer tweeted about how transgender people will no longer be allowed in the US military due to the tremendous medical cost. So regardless of why you think he actually said it, what he, the reason he gave was this tremendous medical cost. So what is that tremendous medical cost? Well, at the high end, it's about 6.5 million pounds per year that would be spent on transition-related medical care. And in my everyday life, 6.5 million pounds is a ton of money. Right? If someone said I had to go pay 6.5 million pounds every year, it'd be not a great thing for me. But the idea is any number, any statistic, needs to be related to the world that it lives in. So we're not talking about whether I can spend 6.5 million pounds every year. We're talking about what the U.S. military can spend every year. Okay, so I tell you, okay, well, the U.S. military has billions of pounds in budget, 6.5 million pounds. It still doesn't mean anything to you. 6.5 million pounds is some esoteric number. It doesn't actually mean anything. So how do we make it relate to a person? Make someone really understand what that number means. Well, uh, Trump, every time he goes to Mar-a-Lago, spends 2.7 million pounds of taxpayer dollars. And he's gone 12 or 13 times just since he was elected. You can do the math on how much that costs the taxpayers this year. And that's really what you need to do with any number. You need to make it make sense. Put it in the context in the world that it lives in and then relate it to someone's everyday life. Spotting the lies, the damned lies, and the statistics, the misleading numbers, the sometimes innocent mistakes is really important as an individual, you know, to how you live your life, how you decide what to do. But it's really essential for companies, right? You're trying to predict the future. You're trying to see what your competition is doing. And they are using numbers to sway people's opinions, rightly or wrongly. So to be able to not just protect yourself, against numbers and bad public opinion or bad press, but to also be able to spot when your competition is doing something a little bit misleading with the numbers is really essential in this world where information is everything. How many times has your kid come home from a bad day at school, really done bad on their math test, and you say, it's okay, Johnny or Susie, I was bad at math, I, I wasn't good at it and I did fine. Right? You say that all the time to your kid. Would you ever say to your kid if they come home with a bad reading score, it's okay, I, I don't know how to read and I, I did just fine. You wouldn't, right? You would never say it's okay to not learn to read. So why in this sort of world where numbers and data is everything, is it okay to tell your kid to not have numeracy, you know, to not be able to understand numbers? Most people think that they're taught math in school and they're either good at it or they're bad at it. But math is logic. It's making decisions to minimize your risk and maximize your potential. But if you think about it in common sense, if you think about it as critical thinking, as logic, math is simple. 